All right, all right. <laughs> Welcome back to another week of NFL, another week of gambling. I'm Tony No Dimes. This is Max the Animal. And today, we're going to keep it short, sweet, to the point, straight gambling picks. Once Just again, NFL bets against the spread, motherfucker. Right. Maybe some totals in there, too. We are once again changing the format <laughs> only a little bit this time, though. We are uh, once again asking you <laughs> <laughs> to stick with us through another change. But no, we decided to do the gambling picks a little bit earlier than the prize pick plays because prize picks need some time to update and, you know, get their lines situated. So we thought that would be better suited for maybe a Saturday show. And, you know, gambling, we could really do any time of the week. The yeah. lines don't move that much. So here we are on a beautiful Coming off a nice Thursday. week last week, uh, two and one, two and one. Two and one, two and one. The Cincinnati Bengals were such a fucking bust against the Browns. Two and one is a winning week. That's what we do on the show. We give you winning weeks. Right. Who was the one that disappointed you? Do you remember? Who burned you? The Cardinals. Yes, they did. Dude. And that was, that was look, that was a game that I, I felt good about, but that was the one that I was a little nervous about. Yeah, dude, it all came down to that muff punt. That muff punt. Greg Dorch, Dorch. Can, can fuck off. I hate Greg Dorch. Yeah, all my homies hate Dorch. All my homies hate Dorch. All right. Let's not waste uh, any more time here. I want to start. All right, you want to kick it off? I want to kick it off. Go I want to start it. it off with the Bills at Jets under 46 and a half. I love this under. I saw a, um, there's like a, you know, a, a betting trend where anytime you see double digit spreads, hammer the under. Go down. So on them. this is a spread. It's a double digit spread. Also, the Bills played the Packers double digit spread, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, the total of that game, 44. And it went under? Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying for this game, that would work. Different team, obviously. Packers oh, and like Jets. The, the score ended at 44. Yeah, yeah. The total gotcha, of that gotcha. game was 44. I don't know if it actually hit the, um, the under for that game. I don't know what the, the total was yeah, for sure. it. But what I'm saying is uh, more often than not, when you do see the double-digit spread, the under is the play. That's why we're going with the under 46 and a half. Here, one team's going to do all the scoring. It's going to be the Bills. Bills might score 27. They might score 30. And the Jets might score 10. Yeah, so. I like it a lot. I uh, I tailed you on this one. And my one concern is that Zach Wilson is so bad, he ends up scoring for the Bills and throws like two pick sixes. That could, that could hurt us for sure. Yeah, but other than that, I think the, the Jets' offense is not going to find a lot of success through the air on the ground. And, you know, they're, they're going to be a predictable team offensively. We know the Jets are going to have to throw the ball. They're going to have to keep pace with the Bills. Probably not going to happen. 46 is actually, like— Pretty it, high number. It's kind of a medium number for a team— that, for in, in a game that, like, one team may not score. So, I like it a lot. There's a game on the slate with a total lower than that but has two great offenses and two bad defenses. And that is the Dolphins and the Bears. And I know that feels a little weird calling the Bears a great offense, but this past month, they haven't been bad. Justin Fields is turning a little bit of a corner. They've been able to score some points. They got 33 against the Pats. They got 29 against the Cowboys. And I think that was big. Yeah, Justin Fields is looking like the best quarterback in that draft. It's not saying much, but yes, he is. Just saying. Yeah. I'm I mean, saying much, you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the Cowboys have a great pass rush, and I think it was really encouraging for that offense to, you know, get stuff rolling on the ground through the air. The Dolphins haven't been that great defensively. They gave up 27 to the Lions. I mean, these are just straight up two dead over teams. The Bears on their side of, uh, on their defense, just lost Roquan Smith, lost Robert Quinn, a couple leaders in the locker room. And then we also got the Bears, who had Chase Claypool. Is he going to be a huge factor? Probably not in the first week, but it's at least like a red zone threat that they didn't have before. So, so I like it's that. A more of, it's just a big body that isn't like... Yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's not Darnell Mooney. It's a big body you can throw to, which is nice. Right. It's not Velas Jones, yeah, who too. they've been trying to use. So uh, my only real concern is that when this field gets wet, it gets shitty to play on, and there was a little bit of a rain concern, but it looks like that is going to move away. It looks like we're going to get a dry game on this one. So 45 is just way too low of a number. I would not be surprised if by game time we see this higher, maybe closer to 47. But, I mean, both these teams have just been smashing overs. At least Bears rec more recently than, like, than total season. Dolphins have been crushing overs. Bears, since their offense has kind of turned a little bit of a corner, have been nice. Yeah, I feel really good about this one. I think it's the best bet on the slate. I like the Bears in that game, so... I expect points to be scored, so I, uh, I agree with you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I think they're they're sneaky in this game. I, I was kind of leaning Dolphins minus five because I think they are just like a tier above the Bears, but I do think Bears can keep it competitive.
competitive, which also helps the over. A lot of back and forth. No no one-sided affairs where, you know, a team gets pinned down. So, Yeah, I almost actually took the Bears for this next pick, but I uh, pivoted to the Patriots minus 4.5 uh, versus the Colts. I know if you're saying, like, I don't see minus 4.5, it's on FanDuel, fuck off. It might not be there when you see this video. I, I was giving them shit because at all other sports books, it's 5.5. But FanDuel, granted, big sports book. Has it at four and a half? Yeah, Great it's, number. It's, it's fan a good duel. number. It's fan duel. Yeah, minus four and a half Patriots. Look, this, they're at home against Sam Ellinger Colts, and it's one of those things where, yeah, I agree. History hasn't really told us much because Tom Brady's gone now. I don't really know what the fuck Patriots are in the Bill, but Bill Belichick and everything like that. But typically at home, the Patriots, good team, hard to beat, especially when the the defense is playing well. Look, they didn't really do great against the Jets last week, but they, you know, Zach Wilson, I think, is better than Sam Ellinger. Zach Wilson struggled against the Patriots. I'm going to see Sam Ellinger probably struggle against the Patriots too. Uh, that's why I just like the Patriots to win. I think, you know, four and a half, five and a half, I don't think it really matters. I think they probably win this game by 10. I don't know if the if the, the Colts are really going to be able to put up a lot of points. Yeah, we also got JT who's highly questionable. There's a good chance he misses this game. Obviously going to hurt the run game. It feels like two gross-ass teams. I don't feel good backing either one. But Mac like, Jones needs like one of those good games too. I feel like this is going to be like, you know, this could be a game where he gets it going. So? Yeah, the, the, I think the Colts defense ain't bad. Colts, the Colts defense is not great. Their their pass defense. Colts are actually uh 20th against the quarterback in fantasy points. Okay, I don't know, I don't know what that actually means for this. How, how does that translate to the spread? I don't, but I don't know how that translates to the spread at all. Nah, eh, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. You're fine. I'm You're fine. good. Patriots it's, minus four and a half. Belichick at home versus rookie quarterback. That's all we need to know. Don't overthink. Well, it. he's not a rookie, but. Well, he might as well be. Yeah. He might as well be. He's an inexperienced quarterback. Yeah. You're right. He's not a rookie. I knew that. All right. Moving on to my second pick. I got another over for you. Packers in Detroit against the Lions. 49 and a half is the total. We are smashing the over because, look, the Lions, just like the Falcons, which I've been successful with in the past, are a huge over team. It just goes to how good their offense has been, how bad and putrid their defense has been. Yes, the Packers offensively with Aaron Rodgers hasn't looked great, but this is the time to get right. This is for sure They're the easiest defense that they have faced this season. It's a massive downgrade from the Bills, which they just faced. And look, the Lions offense at home is really nice. I mean, they are averaging 35 points at home with the lowest score that they've had at 27, which was last week against the Dolphins. And this is including some games where they didn't have DeAndre Swift. They didn't have Amon Ross St. Brown. Again, at home, they've they faced pretty nice defenses against Washington, against Philly, and they're still yucking up points. Green Bay might actually be the easiest defense that the Lions have faced at home. So, you know, Packers haven't been able to pressure many quarterbacks. Jared Goff should be kept pretty clean. Jared Goff, 11 touchdowns, only two picks at home. I also kind of like the narrative that this is just like a damn near must-win game for the Packers. Like, if they want any pride, if they have any ounce of respect for themselves, they will win this game. And I know for sure that the Lions are throwing up points. So, Aaron Rodgers are going to have to reciprocate that. And, you know, 49.5 is a big total, but... All of the Lions games at home have crushed 50 points, and I think it's fair to say that Rodgers can find success against the Lions. Even though he hasn't really found it this year, if there's ever a get-right game, it's against Detroit. Yeah, I don't hate it. I kind of like the Packers in that just to go out there and dominate. Really? Really? Yeah, I, I feel like it's it, like it's uh, one of those things where Aaron Rodgers has to just do what he always does against the Lions. Like, that's the one thing that he still has left in him. Like, I could still go out there and smoke the Lions. Everybody. You think he would. But I honestly, have to believe it or else I was just like, is he done? Like, just retire then if I don't believe that. Really, retire. if you can't beat the Lions, go ahead and retire. Yeah, exactly. I, actually, I actually do like the Lions this week, though. Not enough to, like, give it out as a top three bet. I feel way more comfortable with the over. Uh, Also, keep an eye on Alan Lazard. He was limited on Wednesday practice. Not a huge deal if he's not there. I do think Romeo Dobbs can still get it done. You know, Robert Tunyon will probably be involved. But if Alan Lazard's there, that's just going to help this immensely. Big time. All right, so our... um Third pick is we, we we have a consensus here. That's right. We've come to a consensus. We both liked the Bucks minus three so much that we're both taking it. And this is our final pick. Look, I'll give you my little thing here first. Uh, Bucks have lost three straight. They're due. Tom Brady, I don't know if he's ever even lost four games in a row like in his career. I would bet he hasn't. So I don't I don't think we're gonna see that happen. Rams coming off a bad loss to the Niners. 
Look, they can't score points. The Rams can't score. The Bucks, they're, they're losing games, but they're scoring points. Like, they, you know, they scored 22 or whatever. They scored 22 against the Ravens. They scored 22 against the Ravens. Like, you know, they scored 20, uh, 18 against the Steelers. They scored 21 against the like, They're scoring points, right? They scored 31 against the Chiefs. They just aren't winning games. And the Rams are not scoring points and not winning games. The Rams had uh, 14 points against the Niners last week. They had 24 against the Panthers. 24 so, against the Panthers. Yeah, and then after that, it's just ugly. It's like, you know... Here, uh, 10 against the Cowboys, uh, 9 against the the Niners, Yikes. 20 against the Cardinals, which, you know, Cardinals are nothing nothing special. The Rams are just not winning games. They're not scoring points. Tom Brady and the Bucks are something I'm just not ready to give up on yet. Yeah, if it, although both teams feel broken, it feels like the Bucks are on the upward trend, ascending a little bit, getting a little more healthy. Meanwhile, the Rams are just spiraling out of control. Yeah, like I think the Bucks came into the season unhealthy, and they're trying to figure out how can we win games being like this. They're getting guys back. You're starting to see they're you know, playing a little bit better, whereas the Rams came in probably pretty healthy, and they just have gotten worse and worse every week. Yeah, I mean, Matthew Stafford has looked horrible this o-line has done him no favors but i mean you look at some of these advanced analytics like epa per play uh expected points added i mean matthew stafford is down with like matt ryan carson wentz zach wilson baker mayfield a bunch of other quarterbacks who have just been benched this year he has not helped out the rams at all we also obviously got the fact that cooper cup may not play yeah i didn't even want to i was i was hoping you would mention it yeah yeah i mean Cooper Cup to this offense is more important than any other single player to any offense. I I try to compare it to, like, Derrick Henry to the Titans, but I think Cooper Cup is probably even more of a vital piece than that, and there's just no other comparison to it. When you can't score points and and your best player is on the field, and now you take your best player off the field, I'd... I don't see how you're going to be able to score. Yeah, and of course, there's that narrative out there that is like, oh, well, you got to pressure Brady, you know, without blitzing him. And look, the Rams can't do that. I understand that they have Aaron Donald, but they are the second worst team in pressure rate. They don't get pressure. Their defense does not look good. Brady still looks pretty nice with a clean pocket. Under pressure, he does rely on a lot of dump offs and, you know, short A dots, a bunch of throws around the line of scrimmage. But this just feels like a bad matchup for the Rams. Maybe every matchup for the Rams might be bad going forward. We just need to adjust. Oh, the Rams our might just be a bad team. Right. So I'm saying, like, it's this should be, like, the Bucks should kill them. I think they should win by 10 points. Really? Yeah. I still think it's pretty close, but like at home, you're going to give me the Bucks only lane three. There is a sports book out there, two and a half. Win bet. Got it yeah. at that number. Not going to give it out there, yeah. but. No, we wouldn't do that. Never. No. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this is either the biggest trap game of the week or it's the easiest smash game of the week. So yeah. we will Bucks, find out. Bucks also coming off a little bit of a – they're coming from a Thursday night game. Extended so by for Tom Brady. rest. Yeah. yeah. It just – all signs are really pointing to the Bucks in this one. Maybe this is the best bet of the week. That's why it's our consensus. That's why we both consensus. we both liked it so much. That's why we're either going to – Win it or lose it, baby. Yeah, we're going to dominate <laughs> this week, or we're both going to be looking uh, a little broke, a little yeah, lighter so, in the um, pockets. Real quick, uh, to go over, I went with uh, Bills Jets under 46.5, Patriots minus 4.5, and, and the Bucks minus 3. I also have the Bucks minus 3 paired with the over in the Dolphins-Bears game of 45.5 and, and the over in the Packers-Lions game of 49.5. So... Those are, I guess, five. Normally, we'll have six, yeah. but this week, five. Best bets of the week. Tune in later in the week. Yeah, we're going to do uh, the prize picks. The player props will be probably tomorrow. What's today? You, we're seeing this on Friday. We're going to probably put that out on, on Saturday, the prize picks players. So uh, you know, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. If not, just hit that thumbs up button. We would appreciate it. Um, even if you don't like us, just hit the thumbs up button anyway. It's uh, being a good person. All right. Until then, see you next time. Get wild. Get wild.